Hey there, and welcome to the channel. Spring has sprung in Paleo, and the game's latest 0.178 patch is all about spring. And just like most Paleo patch updates, there's quite a lot to unpack, so grab a snack, get cozy, and let's jump into it. First and foremost, it is now official that Paleo is available on Steam. And of course, it is free to download and play, so if you are someone who's been eyeing the game for a while, but would rather play through Steam, now you can. And for those of you already playing the game and wondering why this announcement is such a big deal, having the game available on Steam opens up some more opportunity for both the game and for the players. For Paleo itself, they get to have Steam work as an advertiser for them to all the gamers who already use the platform, which is around 132 million monthly users, in case you were wondering. And currently, Paleo has about 3 million players, so that's a lot of opportunity for growth. And of course, not all people on Steam are going to want to play, but it's likely a free-to-play game with an already large fan base isn't going to go unnoticed. And the benefit for players is that they're able to have all of their games in one place if they want, the ability to now leave reviews on Steam, and if the game is on Steam, then hopefully it should be able to be played on the Steam Deck directly. Now we haven't exactly got word just yet as I'm making this video on whether or not it is Steam Deck verified. This has yet to be confirmed, but of course that would be the hope. And with the arrival of Paleo on Steam also comes the arrival of a very adorable, much anticipated Frogbert. This oversized plushie has been granted to us by the devs as a reward for players for wishlisting Paleo through Steam. For each 100,000 wishlists on Steam, Frogbert was said to increase in size up until 500,000, where he would then become so massive they can see him from space. Okay, maybe I made that up, but as you can see in the photo, he had the potential to take up at least a quarter of our home plot. Now I know many of us were actually hoping to get each and every size or at least the big one and the small one, but I haven't exactly seen any news for that just yet. So I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. Now for the additions that are spring themed, if you've been to Bahari Bay and wondered what the door near the statue garden was for, well, now we know. The fourth temple, the Temple of Roots, aka the Earth Temple, has finally been unlocked in this new update. The team mentioned that they used a lot of feedback from previous temples to improve the way that this space was built, including a feature where flowers are going to be able to guide you through the quest. And I'm pretty sure that this is heavily based on the fact that the Temple of Gales was pretty difficult to navigate. I myself put that one off for a while because it was really killing my cozy vibe, but thank goodness for YouTube. <laughs> as I did need help trying to get through it. So needless to say, I'm pretty glad that they're gonna try out some new mechanics. I just hope that it's balanced well enough now that it also doesn't become too easy either. The Temple of Roots also brings in some more storyline involving the Golders. So think Einar and Hecla, they're both Golders. And for those of you who haven't played just yet or are early in the game, they're the creatures that most resemble robots. Now the team doesn't give away any spoilers, so neither will I, but I will say that I'm curious if things we've been told by talking with Hecla, Einar, and Kenyatta will end up becoming a main focus for the new storyline, or if it'll be something else entirely. And of course, a new vault has been added to the Temple of Roots as well, with the team saying there is a very special reward for completing the bundle. And of course, now I wanna know what that reward is. I won't talk too much about past rewards just in case someone really doesn't want that to be spoiled for them, but I was impressed with the last two so I do wonder what very special could mean. And a small little side note, the team also let us know this is not the last temple. So for those of you thinking there's only going to be four, you can now rejoice knowing there's more to come in the future. Continuing with the spring news, if you've been waiting for more flora to decorate your home plot with, the wait is finally over. We now have the option to grow flowers on our plot. And yes, I said grow. They aren't going to be for sale at Zeki's or Tish's, but instead you can find the seeds for these flowers through bug catching. While you're out and about catching bugs, you will now notice that insects can drop seeds. Although it has been noted that the seeds only drop from bugs in Kilima and not in Bahari, I'm not really sure why they would do that unless they just want people to hang out in Kilima more. But if you are someone who does not enjoy bug catching at all, Ani will also offer these seeds within his guild store. You can plant these seeds on your plot, water them, and over time, watch them grow. Just like crops, you do need to water them or else they will not grow. They do go through different stages of growth, although at this time, I'm not sure exactly how long that's gonna take as it was not specified in the blog. Thankfully, once they're fully grown though, they're not gonna wilt, but instead stick around forever, where you can easily pick them up and move them around to decorate however you please. 
and each flower is going to have a 100% chance to drop a new seed so that you can continue to grow your floral garden. However, please note that each flower only drops one seed of that flower type. So just keep that in mind when you start planting and moving them around, which ones that you've already gotten seeds from if that's something that's important to you. Otherwise, you're going to need to obtain more flowers via bug catching or at Ani Shop. There are a whopping 13 types of floral seeds to obtain, with the one in the photo looking like a mixed hydrangea, which is my absolute favorite flower, if you couldn't tell by my YouTube banner. So I'm over the moon to see these come to the game. The gardener in me is ready to pass out from excitement. If the characters were real, I would already be over at my chef's house, Bajru, looking at you, ranting about how happy I am. But since Bajru is not actually real, you guys just get to hear about it instead. And as if that wasn't exciting enough, we also have a new tree system as well. The tree seeds that are already in the game can now be planted on your plot, but instead of them automatically being a full grown tree, they're gonna work similar Similarly to how flowers work. You will need to water them and you're going to be able to see them grow through four stages over time. Now hang on, it gets better. You know how in Animal Crossing you can stunt the growth of a tree if you like the way that it looked kind of in that in-between growth stage? Well, now you can do that in Paleo too. And of course you can always chop them down again too if you decide that you don't want them anymore or you just need the resources. And what's a new garden without a little bit of outdoor furniture too? The Spring Fever set is giving me exactly that. Spring Fever. I am so over the winter cold and ready for spring in real life. But check this out, you guys. I am instantly drawn to the adorable swing. How freaking cute is that? Especially with a little vine detail on the sides and the new pergola, two trellises, a wheelbarrow, a fire pit. Wait a second. Are those stones that can go around our flower beds? There's spring fever rock and wood edging available now too. Oh my goodness. That is so nice. I've just been using indoor plants and fences to make a little garden on my plot so far, but that is taking a long time. This is all gonna be so nice to have. Okay, okay, I've gotta reel myself back in again. We still have more to talk about. If you were wondering where the rest of the Emberborn furniture is, it is also now available in this update. Once you receive the Emberborn reed planter from the Temple of Roots and then craft it, the rest of the furniture items from the Emberborn set are gonna be triggered through inspiration. So if you are partial to this set, you're gonna be able to add in all the rest of these beautiful items, except maybe the plushies since I don't see see it on the list, but I'm not surprised since it was a Maji Market item. Okay, so have you guys ever heard of those couples who get married in video games? I'm talking like set up a whole wedding party and everything in the game. It's a legitimate thing. Well, if you're one of those couples that's been waiting for the right moment in Palea, then here's your sign. Wedding gowns and suits for your characters are now available on the online shop for purchase. And I gotta say, I think the suits look pretty sharp, but the dresses, maybe it's just me, but they're giving more ball gown, except the white one, of course, which is obviously the most important one. Maybe that's what they were going for since the bridesmaids don't really want to overshadow the bride. They are pretty nonetheless, and the thought of wearing them whilst doing basic things like hunting Cernuk does make me laugh. Like many of the newest costumes, these wedding outfits come with a special feature with a little twist. When wearing this outfit, you'll see flowers grow and bloom around you, and even more will continue to grow when up to five players are nearby who are also equipped with the same outfit. I don't know who comes up with these ideas, but I love their creativity. And if you really want to arrive to the wedding in style, there is a new wedding party glider. Although sadly, no photo was given in the patch notes, so we're going to have to check that out once we're in game. Besides players having the options for in game weddings with each other. This does lead me to wonder if weddings with NPCs are coming soon too. And in typical paleo fashion, one outfit per patch is never enough. So say hello to the best costume on the market so far, the hot dog costume. Okay, so whether it's your favorite or not depends on your opinion, of course. How can you hate on the hot dog costume? The three variants include the party sausage, in a pickle, and ice cream. The team shared the disclaimer that they're not responsible for, quote, any injuries incurred while attempting to eat a cosmetic. I don't think anyone's planning on eating the costumes, but maybe falling over in them would seem more likely. Are you digging the hot dog costume? Let me know in the comments. I personally hope to be seeing many of you in game running around as hot dogs. I'm gonna be really disappointed if you're not. And oddly enough, there are only two costumes this this update. However, April 9th, we're going to see four more additional costumes come to the store. The Noble Guard, the Moto Head, the Ready to Pop, and the Shoulder Show Off. 
A couple more non-spring related things coming are updates to climbing, with the team saying this will be the first of several behind the scene changes to an improved climbing mechanic. But hey, I'm just glad to see it because I think most of us have had our moments of either looking like an idiot trying to climb or feeling the frustration of not being able to move at all. If you are wondering where the Mujin were at, they took a little bit of a vacation, but thankfully they are back in the game and we will be able to hunt them again. If you are dating or just chatting with Nayo, you may now notice that he will have more character animations, especially when idling. And another big update, the option to change controller rebindings on both PC and Switch is now supported as well. Controller hotkeys can now be rebound. They do note that if you do play on PC, you will need to redo any custom keybinds that you may have had. I would guess that they've been auto reset. And Palea does have partial support for PlayStation DualShock and DualSense controllers. However, they don't mention anything more about about that, so I'm not sure if there's gonna be more support for that in the future or not. If you do experience any issues with any of these though, they do want your feedback of course, so be sure to share that with them so they can improve it even more. If you didn't see something in this update that you were hoping for, do not worry. There's plenty more to come as the devs have also teased a roadmap of sorts. Unfortunately, we don't have a timeline for these specific things as they are still in the works, but it looks like we're gonna be seeing some very exciting decorative additions, one of them being built blocks. I'm not 100% sure what all these will be capable of. We'll have to wait and see what the team releases later about them, but from the photo we can at least see that you can use these blocks and pieces of structural decor to build things similar to the obstacle course. For those of you who have gotten creative and made your own DIY paths whilst waiting for real pathways, you may not have to wait much longer for the real thing. Although if I put in as much work as you guys did, I might just leave my DIY path and not even swap it out. But if you do want to, it looks like there's gonna be at least five pathways made of both stone and wood added into a future patch. A new housing blueprint is also shown saying that you can level up your home with the latest housing layup and add-ons. And this one? Oh, Oh my gosh, you guys, initially I saw the covered front porch and with that alone, I was excited. I just think the little covered porch is super cute and cozy. But then I realized it looks like there's a second level to the house too and reading it again, it does say level up. So I'm certain that we're getting a second level for sure, which is just... I've been writing things down on the side that I wanted to see come to the game, but honestly, I never thought about having a second level in my house. I love that the team keeps delivering us more than we even ask for. And the preview does say add-ons, plural, which makes me wonder if there's gonna be more that we can add to our homes besides just the second level and the covered front porch. Friendship level five is also in development, which is especially great for those of us who have already completed level four with the NPCs. And I do wonder what level five is gonna bring as well. Obviously, I assume level five is gonna come with more storyline, of course, but does having a higher relationship level also mean that romanceable NPCs will have an additional interaction now too? Are the wedding outfits foreshadowing the possibility of marriage with the NPCs down the road? Map grids will also be coming in a future patch. And I've seen a lot of talk already about why anyone would want this or what it could be used for, but essentially having a map grid would make it easier to find things like flow and Kalium when they've been called out. Instead of just saying, oh, it's north of the outskirts, players should be able to call it a more specific coordinate using the grid. I see how this could be really helpful, especially when you're like me and you're constantly forgetting to bring flares with you. Anytime I find flow or palium, I can never mark the spot because I always forget my dang flares. Don't worry though, I do still call them out the best I can. And lastly, for our look into the future roadmap, the previously mentioned ammo pouches are still confirmed to be in the works. Just like the latest quest pouch, the ammo pouch will be a separate spot in your inventory where only ammo related items are kept, freeing up your pocket space and that much more for anything else you might pick up while you're out doing things like hunting, mining, or foraging. But like I said, guys, that was a lot to unpack. I didn't even get to the bug fixes either, but I'm gonna leave a link for the blog in the description in case you wanna check those out. What are you most looking forward to from this new update though? The decor, the new temple, learning about the Golders? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you did enjoy this video and as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.